Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It's the uh, afternoon slash evening in the dark here edition. So uh, I thought I would do another one today because I'm still very awake and I got a question from uh, Daniel that I thought was really good. So he mentioned that, or he mentioned that I mentioned that I used to only know linked lists. That was the only data structure that I knew about when I was working on Ytalk. And uh, he says that that hits close to home and is asking, you know, where to go next. So thank you, Daniel, for asking that because it's a really good question. And um, I'm really happy to talk about it. So <laughs> the thing I think you should do next is learn how to make a vector. Because a vector is pretty simple to put together and super useful. And um, vectors and linked lists, they really are the, uh, the two cornerstones of any personal code library, I would say. Uh, you should really, you, you will just find them super useful if you make them. So a vector, if you're not familiar, is just uh, an array that grows dynamically. So you don't have to decide up front how big it's going to be. But instead, um, you just create one, and then you can add elements to it, and uh, it tracks the uh, current capacity that it has, storage capacity, and then uh, if you try to add something to it and it doesn't fit, then it transparently um, allocates more storage and puts the, puts the new thing in the, in the new storage somehow. And there are many different ways to implement vectors. And uh, just going through the process of learning how they work and implementing one, I think, is super useful and um, you should just do it. Everyone should make a vector um, because it's a super helpful exercise. And then I would say after you master the vector, <laughs> um, you want some kind of uh, associative container. So something where you can have a, um, a key value store basically, right? So a map of sorts. And I think the first time I ever made a map class, it was internally implemented as a linked list of um, key value pairs. And then <laughs> it was not fast <clears throat> or in any way efficient, but it was still my map and I was proud of it uh, back in the day. Uh, so you want to make a, some kind of a map where you can look things up by key, uh, add things by key, remove things by key, and then you can iterate over it and get each key and value and, and so on. Um, it's, a, it's easy enough to learn. And you, can, you can definitely make one uh, if you just learn about it. And it's totally worth building. Like all of these things, all data structures are worth learning, I would say, like these basic ones. Um, you will feel more powerful as a programmer almost immediately after you learn these. Like, I promise, <laughs> it's so worth it. Um, and then, um, I guess I would say some kind of tree comes after that maybe, or, well, first actually, um, first you should, you could make a hash table. A hash table is a really kick-ass data structure that um, once you figure out how it works for the first time, you're gonna feel like, ho oh, ho ho, <laughs> you know, like this, uh, this really good programmer feeling where you actually understand something properly. Uh, hash tables um, tend to give people that feeling. It's a very good feeling. Uh, and they're relatively easy to implement. Um, and you don't have to get fancy. Like with all of these things, it's easy to fall into the trap of, of thinking that you have to do the fanciest possible thing or um, that you have to do it like the one true way or the one correct way, but there's like a hundred different ways to do hash tables and uh, You can just pick one of them and, and make one and If you're anything like me, you will super enjoy the process anyway <laughs> because I don't know about other people, but I, I freaking love writing container code. It's just so much fun because um, it's like, uh, it almost feels like you're doing yourself a favor when you're writing this kind of code because you're sort of writing this code that will make your future code better or, uh, this is not quite the right way to say it, but 
it's like you're building a building block for future code. And if you make nice building blocks for yourself, then everything you do in the future from now on is going to be slightly easier, slightly better, slightly more consistent and robust and everything. So that's a really, really good skill to cultivate. Um, and then I was going to say tree as well. Um, once you have mastered the vector, the, um, the linked list, the vector, and the associative container, associative array, uh, and uh, hash table, then making a tree is probably a good idea. Um, doesn't have to be fancy, um, but just making some kind of a tree so that you can write some uh, recursive traversal uh, code, because once you work with trees, when you work with trees for the first time and, and you uh, use recursion to traverse the trees, that is another one of those like really feel good moments for programmers often because it's just it's super duper neat the way that you can traverse a tree with recursion um, and I don't know it's I was so blown away the first time I, I um, made my own tree class and traversed it uh, definitely definitely worth doing that and the same thing there like you don't need to be fancy and um, just make something simple <sighs> yeah <laughs> and then yeah like that's that's a that's a good set of data structures like if you can if you can make one of each of those you will be such uh, such a better programmer than you are right now and you can totally do this you can I promise you it's not terribly difficult and it's totally worth doing and then um, in addition to this stuff uh, I guess I'm not sure if they're really data structures per se but smart pointers are another one that everyone who's doing C++ should probably learn how to make their own smart pointers because it's super duper useful and smart pointers are just um, absolutely necessary uh, element of modern C++ and making your own smart pointers will teach you how they work and uh, you will gain a much better understanding of the language and even if you don't end up using your own smart pointers or your other containers and whatever um, just going through the process of building these things will it will widen your perspective so much that even when you're working with other code um, that that greater perspective is going to help you in so many ways so I would say there are three main smart pointers um, that you can implement that are pretty easy to do, uh, at least naive versions of them that will work. And those would be the, um, the single owner smart pointer, like um, the unique pointer from the STL, and then the multiple owner uh, reference counting pointer, like the shared pointer from STL. And then uh, you can also make a weak pointer which would be a smart pointer that becomes null when the thing that it's pointing to is destroyed. Um, if you make these three smart pointers for yourself, then you will definitely level up your C++ skill. Now, I don't know if you're a C++ programmer or, or what language you're using, so I was just sort of assuming C++ here. But uh, if you're not doing C++, then... I don't know what the equivalent thing would be in your language. Um, and then, of course, there are many, many data structures that you can learn about, and it's almost always worth learning about more data structures, although, like, in the end, um, you, at least in my personal experience, I only end up using the basic ones over and over rather than getting fancy all the time but there are some things that come up every now and then where I get to use like some special thing and it's kind of fun too when that happens but most of the time it's like you're a carpenter you know most of the time you're just working with your hammer <laughs> and as much as you would like to to take out that fancy tool that you got at the fancy tool store um, you got a lot of nails that need hammering, right? <laughs> so, 
the basics. The basics are good. Always, always, um, you always want to have a really solid foundation. So, yeah, that, those are my recommendations to you. Um, I feel like I could talk forever about this because it's a subject that I hold very dearly. I, I like implementing data structures and stuff. Um, if you are programming in C++, then definitely learn how to do these things as templates because they will make you so powerful uh, and you will be able to write extremely nice, extremely efficient code if you, if you get better at templates. Um, it's totally worth lo uh, learning that if you are doing C++ in any capacity. But, you know, at the same time, there's no rush with these things. Like, you can just go at your own pace, uh, enjoy yourself, and um, always try to learn something so that you can be a little bit more efficient and a little bit better tomorrow than you were today. Uh, and always be stacking those improvements. <laughs> we should all be doing that, right? Stacking our improvements. Even though it's, sometimes it's, it can be a bit difficult because you just want to get stuff done. But it's important to take a little time here and there to uh, expand your horizons and add things to your toolbox or to sharpen the tools that you already have. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just going to stop talking here because I don't know what else to say. But thanks again, Daniel, for asking the question. And thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me <clears throat> on this really dark and rainy commute back home. And I will see you next time. Bye.